So, we're over here. We're gonna try and make our own bulba. Like, completely from scratch. This is a 600 by 800 piece of hot rolled steel. It's three mil, because that's all I could get. I couldn't get any thicker without ordering. I figured I'll make this section up, and if I have to, and if I have to, I can brace it afterwards. Um, I'll make that up, and then what I'm gonna do is actually make like a winch cradle across the chassis rails, because on the 80 series, you got two chassis rails that you sort of mount your whole bull bar to, which will be the best spot to bolt the winch cradle section to. Um, and then for the sides where I'm gonna have, so I'll have a winch cradle section, and then I'm gonna have like a tubing off the side for like the comp style look um, to sort of go with the rest of the car. The sides where I'm gonna have my recovery point is made out of six mil. So the six mil is gonna bolt to the chassis and also be welded to the three mil winch cradle section in the middle. So what we'll do is we'll start trying to fold this. I don't have a folder. So what I'm gonna try and do on the inside is put a grind line nearly all the way through and then see if I can bend it up. So I just did my first fold. Like I said, grind. I'll set it up in a second, you can see what I'm doing with it. But you wait till you see how good this fold line is. You honestly would have thought it came out of um, out of a folder. Now people will say it's weaker because I'm grinding it out. I'm actually gonna, once I fold it to my desired pitch, I'm going to tack it on the inside. I'm not fussed about seeing welds on the inside, I just didn't want to see them on the outside. So, you get a good look there, that's my grinding one. And that right there is my folded line. Look how neat that is on the outside. Actually worked a lot better than I thought and it actually folded reasonably easy. Um, I just sort of stood on it where it is and just pulled it up and it just come up to the desired angle until it touched the other side, so. I'll sit that down, I'll put my pitch finder on that, then I'll put my pitch finder on that and work out the difference in angle degrees and then I'll be able to work out if that's folded enough. Then I'll just go tack, 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 you know, and it'll stay where I need to, which will be good. So that right there, 0, 0.0, so level, and then if I go and put it here, 43.5 degrees. I'm gonna go with 50 to start with and then take my other bull bar off and sort of sit it there and see how it sits. So just mounting this up to try and work out um, the distance I wanna put my next fold at. Um, so I've just got a clamp to my chassis rails. I've got nothing sort of set at the moment. And then I'm gonna put my next fold and see how close we can actually get this to the car and see if I can still fit a winch in it. It's gonna be my hardest thing. Um, I can always bring it out a bit further if I have to, but I suppose we'll um, find out once I measure my winch and stuff in a minute. As you can see, I've just tacked my first bend, I had it up on the car and just sort of held it there at the degree I wanted, put the pitch finder on it, a little level, and um, just tacked it next to it. And then I've marked where my next fold is and I've just grinded through it. Put this down and I'll see if I've grinded enough and I'll see if I can fold it. just sitting it on the ground I've got 0.9 so this piece here I want at 90 pretty much 90 degrees so at the moment I've got 89.8 so 0.9 that might be a bit too much this one I think I need to be let's say 89 degrees to compensate for the degree I've got on the ground and that one there 89. That one's pretty much perfect. And what I'll do is I'll tack the corners of it once it's set where it is and then I'll put it on the car. So we've just got it back on the car again. A lot of on and off, on and off. That one there should be 50. Which, yep, pretty goddamn close. That one's 80. Eight. I reckon it could come in a little bit. Oh, 
What I got done yesterday was like my side piece welded on. That's just cut around the body. Now I'm now trying to decipher where I wanted to cut at angle. So I'm gonna cut to here and I'm pretty sure I just need to trim the other side and refit it again. Pretty sure that there is where my number plate's gonna end. And I'm thinking of going from the number plate down and across. I've got two bolt holes in that one. I'm gonna put the third one in. Same on the other side, so I've got three. The more bolts I find, it's gonna be stronger structurally. Um, so yeah, and I'll get new bolts as well rather than using the old ones that have been used a million times. I'll go get some proper graded ones these days. But what I'll do is I'll cut it to width, weld my side plate on the other one, sort of bolt it on, and then I can sort of plan from there. Start doing things. I also grabbed my tube today. Um, I got quite a bit of it because I'll use some for my rock sliders as well. So we'll start um, cutting this and getting it to the right width and then we can weld our end cap on. Once we weld our end cap on, we should be good. So we just cut 45 mil off, just to bring the tube that slightly bit lower. Looks heaps better like that. Yeah, it looks better. Oi! What have we been doing, Muzi? So we've been out here just changing our designs. As always. Yeah, <laughs> change design nah. again. So we've gone with a short single hoop here now. Instead of running one all the way across and around, I couldn't quite get the aggressive angle and down. So now what we've got, I've got that one just tacked on there and I'm just cutting two little side ones in just below the indicator. <laughs> so that's the second one just there. You still got your indicator there, which I'm hoping isn't a problem. Um, and then, yeah, that sort of gives it a bit more of a character character on the front, which uh, that can get tacked on in a minute. I was just using it to sort of duplicate it on the other side. But um, yeah, and then all we got to do in here is I've went and got my plate this morning. So I'm going to put a plate from the chassis out cut around the shape of the inner cooler onto the other side one bolt in each plus weld it fully to this and then that's where the winch will sit on and i've got number plate fits perfectly here and then i'll work out my winch exit because that fold there should be pretty close to the top of the chassis line so my winch exit will be there and then i'll drill some holes in this i'll plan it out later for airflow up into the um up into the inner core so yeah still got to drill recovery points in this and then i'm thinking i'm gonna roughly the same angle as that on the front and then put a nice curve to it from here like nice and low looks pretty aggressive and even up top, like it still has a real nice aggressive approach angle, which is good. So now I've just got 100mm metre long, 6mm thick. What I'm going to do is weld it as like my winch plate. So I've just marked it now. This bit here is the little bit I've got to cut out for my inner cooler. My overall length, cut that off. And then my winch should just fit nicely in between all of that. Um, I can move my inner cooler back a smidge if I have to. But it should all fit pretty nicely, we all hope. Sick. So that's cut now, we'll um, try and put it in and see if it fits, hopefully. We just tack the winch plate in, as you can see. And there's a decent gap between my intercooler and the plate. On the bottom, what I might do anyway, there's some bolts under here which holds my inner cooler. I might even just shift them that way a little bit, give it a bit more room, drill these two out a bit more. I've got two on the bottom, I've got a bolt inside, so there's what, two, five, six bolts on each side. So each side's going to have six bolts, so there'll be 12 bolts holding it, um, which should be plenty. Everything will be welded out together. I just 
sprayed a heap of a copper weld through primer on everything. We'll go through weld everything fully. So we spent the last hour on the hot glue gun making all my welds nice and pretty. I give her a bit of a hose off now. Um, yeah, I'm going to start calling myself the hot glue gun specialist. Specialising hot glue guns. Um, we threw a couple different designs out and do a couple holes just for airflow through here. Now here and here is where my winch bolts are underneath so I'm hoping if I get this out I can actually get in a little bit easier to do the winch bolts up. Right, as you can tell it's getting dark, got me lights on. Spent most of the day doing it, it's 10 past 8 so but we have this put on which is looking pretty good. I just need a little bit bigger of a drill bit just for my holes on the side. So I ended up <coughs> three on the side, three on the bottom, one on top, um, which is going to be plenty. Got my recovery points, I just got to run through them with like a bit of sandpaper or a file or something. I've just rounded the edge very minimal on both sides. And then I've got five holes in there for airflow straight up into my inner cooler. The bottom bolts and the top bolts on the chassis rails of 80 series are M10 1.25s I think. The side ones are actually, I oh know, the bottoms and tops are M12 1.25, the sides are M10. So they're different, which when I took the bolt, I just took the one because I had my side bolts in, um, in this plate already. So I didn't take one of them, but we've now learnt. I fitted the winch in, got everything sort of drilled out, ready for that to bolt in. Sort of wanted all my holes drilled out. If I put the light bar on, drill the holes out for that so when i paint it all it's all the holes are all painted and everything as well we're back this morning went and got some horses this morning and got some step drill bits just so i could drill out a little bit bigger of a hole they couldn't have any bigger bits of bunnies it's going to mount me number plate so i've got the holes there light bar so when i paint it all the holes get painted on the inside refit it make sure all the holes are nice and all the bolts go in true then I think I'm pretty much ready for paint. So we'll get this one on. So we ran into a pretty good problem. The winch didn't fit because of this bit here, nor did the bracket. So taking the grill off, that's where the horn was, it's just here at the moment. That fits behind the grill now. So once you put the grill back on, that's behind. Which is nice, I'll just pop the cables out through there, I'll mount the horn here or something if I can, or even there. I might even just hang it sideways, I don't know. You don't even use it. No, nah, I don't use my horn. And then we just got to cut a little bit of this one out to suit the winch to come in. <coughs> Not much. Should be still pretty stiff because it's got bolts here with a bracket and bolts on the edge. There's actually nothing holding this middle anyway, which is the loosest part. So we'll chop a bit of that out and uh, should be good, eh? There we go. That's it. Mm, that looks good. Oh, that fits so nice. That's like snug as a bug. Can still use everything, operate it all. That, that looks right. really good. Look at that. Look, look at the fitment on that. Oh, look at that. Perfect fitment. No horn needed. No, it'll still work. <laughs> it's just going to rattle, that's all. So I sort of need to find somewhere to put it. Just making an aerial bracket. There it is over there. My UHF before I forget about it and go and paint the whole thing. I just made like a little U-shaped bracket and I'm just going to weld it to the side of that plate just there. Ding. Something like that. Weld it straight on there. You're a fucking weirdo. <laughs> Got the aerial bracket welded on. 
not the greatest weld because some child played with my welder and I didn't realize when I uh, turned it on and tried to weld it. But it's on, as we can see. Sitting here now, it's just like it's loosely. Okay. Yeah. Gemma reckons it's sideways, but I said don't worry because once I put it on, what I can actually do is bend this bracket up a little bit to suit to make it to make it straight once it's all fitted to the car and stuff. So first coat of etch primer is down. I'll let that dry for probably 10, 15 minutes. I mean, the weather in here is pretty warm at the moment. I'm gonna throw some paint out. I've got full one plus a mixed one ready to go. So in case you haven't watched my painting of my 80 series, just down the back there, I'm colour matching this. I'll give you a look at the colour. That's one coat of clear. One. I'll do probably three, I reckon. Even look at this flare that I just got sitting here. And my little light shrouds. Beautiful. Just rolling the whole car, you know. Pop these bad boys on, and we're ready to wheel. Nice aggressive stance. Big clearance. That's the gap that's in there. That was one of my questions when I was building it. I didn't want a massive gap in there that looked hideous and all that. But built it, got it as tight as I could to the car. Winch and inner cooler are very close, but there's clearance between the lot. However, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Hope you enjoy, and I'll see you on the next one.